Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us this conversation, this fascinating conversation. Uh, my name is Yasmin. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Cleric Company. Uh, with you from the Netherlands, we're an Israeli Dutch company, and our and our uh, mission is actually to optimize uh, internal decision makers, uh, decision making processes. Uh, uh, with corporations and startups digitally. So it's my honor to facilitate and to uh, have this uh, discussion. Another example of a digital collaboration between uh, tech industry uh, leaders and uh, top-notch startups. So I think it will be just natural maybe to uh, welcome you all the panelists, all the startups and all our panelists, Vera, Daniel, Martin and Dennis. Uh, so I think it will be nice to start with a maybe introduction, if you can tell us a bit about yourself, about your job. Um, so Vera, would you like to start? Uh, with pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a honor to be here. Uh, my name is Vera Steiner and I'm the innovation manager and product uh, manager by Hatches and Dry Austria. Um, in Vienna. We are the third, uh, one of the three largest uh, telco corporates uh, in Austria with approximately 4 million customers and we belong to the um, Hutchison Holding uh, with the headquarter in Hong Kong uh, and the um, business line of the telecommunication companies. That means that we have uh, and other operational companies and telecommunication companies uh, worldwide uh, in Europe and, and in Asia. Uh, I'm responsible uh, for the product implementation, for, for the product uh, management with the end-to-end -end responsibility. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before continuing with you, Daniel, I will just ask from the uh, startup if you can please mute yourself and maybe close the camera for now, and then we will just call you for your t for your turn to start your pitch. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, Daniel, we we are with you. Please tell us a bit about. Yeah. Yourself. Thank you. First of all, um, uh, for the invitation and being back here second time, um, this time virtually. So my name is Daniel. I'm heading up the um, commercial partnerships with the telco industry uh, from Facebook. I'm since around uh, 90 years in the telco industry. So a lot, many years uh, actually on the other side of the table on the CVC side um, of telco partnerships uh, and also um, on the venturing side. Um, so we're looking into, as I said, commercial partnerships with the telco industry. Of course, we invest a lot into startups, uh, partner with, uh, with startups. You might have heard about our recent acquisition of a customer just a few weeks ago. So I think uh, there's always interesting things on the plate, uh, interesting partnerships. So yeah, uh, looking forward to be here. That's fascinating. Uh, Martin, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. This is my first time, so I cannot really imagine uh, what is a non-virtual uh, conference here. Uh, my name is Martin Homola. Uh, I am working for Telenor Hungary. Uh, I am the digital product director here in Hungary. Uh, so we are dealing with uh, with all the things which are non-core from tackle perspective. So I am usually saying that we are dealing with all the things which are above the boring uh, uh, voice and SMS and the data packages, but uh, which are far more uh, fascinating uh, than these things. Uh, I spent like now the, the last uh, almost 15 years in the taco industry and I am actually coming from the from the core part. Um, and like one and a half year ago, Turner Hungary decided to establish this, uh, this non-core focused uh, area and the main uh, ambition with it was that uh, to put more focus and to put more resources on on how to be involved more into this digital and non-core part. Beside this position, uh, I am actually leading the product developments, majorly focusing on B2B, but on B2C as well, uh, for the full uh, CE region, which is covering uh, Hungary, Serbia, Montenegro, Bulgaria, and in some of the cases, Slovakia and Czech Republic. So. Uh, this is my position, and I'm really looking forward to, to these discussions and to the, to the pitches. It's nice to be here. Thank you. I appreciate that. And welcome for this first session. 
Um, so, Dennis, we also heard your uh, interesting conversation, presentation before. Um, for the new attendees in this mm -hmm. uh, Okay, uh, thank you for, for, for again for your invitation. I am a head of scouting and partnership team in MTS Startup Hub. This is Department of uh, Strategy, uh, big departments, and uh, I'm responsible for scouting uh, for our accelerator, pre-pilot program, for our CVC fund, and uh, for, uh, for developing partnership uh, with right now use uh, maybe modern conception of uh, collaboration we try to find new ways to uh, make new products and um, also uh, i have a big experience uh, in the system of management uh, now interesting in uh, innovation system management uh, 56002 and uh, this is my interest in and how i try to find the way how uh, we can use this standard inside mts because mts is a big company and uh, uh, not the all parts of this company knows uh, much about innovation and um, thank you thank you for invitation Thank you, appreciate that. So I think that uh, right now the format is, uh, we, it would be nice to start to initiate a, a, a discussion and a conversation about a few things. And it would be very interesting for us uh, to hear your opinion and your experience uh, from your perspective. And I believe that after that, we will have this uh, pitch com competition with the startups. So I would like to start with the first uh, question. Um, so. We all were affected by the COVID-19 thing, especially telecoms, and especially in the context of a B2C. So what I would like to ask you is, what are the main challenges that you faced during this, this yeah, I say, period um, of time? I think and how did you translate from, those challenges uh, to opportunities from a in, your, in your department? Um, uh, Daniel, would you like to start? From a telco perspective, uh, we of course saw a lot of traction in the digitization. And I think the biggest one was actually enabling commerce so be it for telcos, uh, a big push on digitization. So we really saw a push of 13% uh, within this year, which actually took 10 years uh, before. We saw that in, in, in five months uh, on the development mm -hmm. in some markets. So that was really, really a big push happening on, on some of the platforms. And we worked with startups um, on, on some very specific issues that actually were also specific for Facebook. Um, you might have heard. Uh, the um, Stop Hate for Profit initiative during the summer, which was a big thing also in the media, where we worked also with a startup to developing something like some, some hate speech bots uh, with, with AI and with the telco, Deutsche Telekom. So it was a three party, party partnerships. Um, and that was um, yeah some of the learnings that uh, pivoting really also challenging uh, into opportunities, which I think is also one phase of the crisis that we saw. Yes, I would say that, that from 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 telco perspective, I think that uh, first of all, we are Martin, still sitting in a quite like good industry uh, when it comes to to to, to COVID and the, the the impact of the pandemic. So from this angle, uh, we have a quite uh, quite good position because uh, our solutions, our services are like inevitable in this time. So that's that's actually quite a good uh, good position to be in. On the other side, we still face to, to some of the quite huge challenges as the telcos, uh, at least in Hungary, we, uh, the Hungarian telco market is characterized by three big MNOs, uh, all of them with a countrywide quite massive retail footprint. So like uh, 150 to 200 retail stores um, in, uh, all, all across the country. And uh, when it comes to pandemic, of course, we, uh, we, we recognize the quite massive uh, decrease in the footfall, uh, which is usually quite an important item when it comes to telco. Uh, you can actually uh, cross and upsell customers in the stores. Uh, you can sell a lot of things, you can convince the customers, uh, but on the other side, you can actually treat them uh, quite well as well. Uh, and in Hungary, it is still a quite retail focused uh, market. Uh, but a lot of footfall uh, disappeared. So what we what we've done actually is that we 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 put uh, 
enormous focus on uh, how to put uh, how to push this traffic to the online spaces and i think that uh, what just uh, what just uh, just daniel said before uh, we experienced as well like a super massive increase uh, in the shift of the online which means that like uh, what happened previously in three to four years, it just happened in three months now. So that's actually a quite good thing. Uh, of course, we, we, we try to enable it as well. So that's one part. Um, and the other part is that we want it to be the, the, the forerunners when it comes to how to support the digital education and the digital office on the other side in the B2B. Uh, in Hungary, and but I think it's it's quite valid all across the globe, is that uh, that from springtime uh, a lot of education moved to online spaces, uh, which was not really the case before, um, and so we try to 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 use our tools to help uh, the families uh, here, and to help the on the other side as well, uh, so the schools and the teachers how to. How to be more effective in, in 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 the digital education? So we provided once we provided data packages to the to the end users, and the other part is we provided some education to the teachers that how you can actually uh, have a good online class in any of the online platforms, uh, which was not used before by the teachers. So I think that this is this is really a good uh, good part, and and I tend to to see that this is a quite good opportunity to, to that. Telcos could show the the relevancy of them in the society and how to support the society, which is actually a good thing. Um, I think digitalization yes, of education um, is a very good example. I have some idea about um, this situation. Dennis, I, uh, what would be your I thoughts know about that, this uh, for example, we finished the uh, this time of period with uh, very good, the best results in MTS. Uh, and uh, for example, 50% of the results is from the traditional telco business and another 50% 50, 50 uh, results from new non-telco uh, business solution uh, as media, as uh, IoT and cloud. And uh, now we understand that uh, that the future, uh, the future of telco in Russia with ecosystem, and uh, for example, uh, we are in the some new stage of uh, con competitive different ecosystem in Russia. Maybe you know that uh, it hu huge uh, bank Sberbank has their own ecosystem, and uh, Yandex. Maybe you know this name uh, have own, um, has known ecosystem um, services, and uh, this situation uh, show uh, maybe to to all of uh, business uh, business leaders that uh, uh, ecosystem and is the most important idea of uh, this period because. Uh, when uh, some when customers come to to one uh, to one services, it's easy to ask them to try to uh, uh, new new services. And uh, inside this ecosystem, the uh, the level and the the price of uh, uh, and the lifetime value which, which we can uh, share with our clients is much more. Uh, longer and uh, we can make more uh, same business with our with our clients uh, and uh, some of the the idea that I see uh, that maybe uh, after this uh, situation with virus uh, the changes will speed in maybe five or ten times uh, quicker than than usual. And we see uh, that uh, some companies uh, which can help, which can uh, prepare, which could prepare to these uh, changes, uh, they have a success now. Thank you. Vera. <laughs> Thanks again. Uh, I think uh, it's a challenge.
no, um, I think you're on undoubtedly mute, this is a challenging year for us. On the one side, we experienced um, what already Daniel and um, the uh, Martin uh, mentioned: the radical increase uh, in the uh, use of uh, of the internet, of the uh, mobile uh, phones, etc. Uh, we experienced the radical digitization within one night, uh, generally, and that had as consequence the change of the consumer um, of the consumer handling. Um, if you ask the Austrian, if you if you asked the Austrian before COVID, then almost um, only thirty percent of all. We were ready to use the, uh, the the credit card or the the cashless payment as the uh, payment tool. After COVID, almost seventy do this. Examples: uh, If we talk about the non-core business, if we talk about the change in the uh, consumer uh, consumer perceptions, etc. This is one thing. On the other side, we have uh, still to expand our infrastructure and to uh, work uh, on our core business, uh, regardless of the COVID. For example, this year in Austria, uh, three uh, large companies, uh, telco companies, spent over 20, 200 uh, million euros uh, on the 5G uh, auction tender uh, in order to uh, pick up the uh, required frequencies for the uh, new uh, infrastructure for the for the enabling this 5G uh, future development. So that means on the one side we have this uh, radical digitization that uh, means uh, you have to stand here as a critical infrastructure. You have to uh, bring. Um, the maximum of the efficiency uh, and effort to your uh, customers to be uh, still on top. On the other side, we have these challenges that are connected with the continuous uh, investments. That means at the end you have to be high. You have to uh, be high performance organization, and still you have to develop the non-core. Uh, business solutions and innovation because the market the market is saturated and you have no opportunities to growth uh, in the core business like uh, in earlier times. This is great. So. I think that in all your answers, uh, it was conveyed kind of a rapid and drastic digitalization. And the light of, in the light of these answers, um, how do you see the future of connectivity in the next two years? Because there is a huge hype around M2M and IoT and machine learning uh, and so on and so forth. So how uh, do you maybe see that can I just, uh, uh, in the say, light of, uh, I would say, uh, your answers? Very for, short and straight to give you a very a straightforward answer. From my point of view, undoubtedly, it will go uh, direction uh, connected world and it will include uh, everything and we will think uh, in the terms of ecosystems like Dennis uh, mentioned, it will just uh, we will experience just uh, more speed uh, in the development uh, due to the COVID. This is my perception. Uh, yes, I think that um, we will okay. see, I hope that we will see the, the Dennis, same would you like to speed share your, of your changes. Opinion? Because um, as, I, as I feel, in, in my opinion, uh, this uh, situation with COVID uh, change the base of uh, customer experience and uh, uh, we we start thinking uh, we start thinking in in the way which we don't use before and uh, i think that uh, uh, new services uh, based on connectivity will increase much uh, much better than than uh, earlier hmm.
Thank you. Daniel, would you like to share your insights? Apologies. Um, I mean, as yeah, we are I think focusing on B two C, I think, uh, and you mentioned IoT uh, and these kind of thing. I think it's undoubtedly that uh, the B two B part, I mean, has already been taken up in, in some areas. We see such pilot, like uh, think about the Hamburg Harbor as as a pilot here in in Europe. Uh, so you see these use cases. I think on the on the B two C side, this this still needs to be proven that the connectivity, let's say, is also profitable. So I think on the one hand, uh, looking also a little bit connected with the pandemic, the home connectivity uh, is, is, or let's let's call it the smart home, which is also, let's say, I think a telco use case, I don't know, since years, uh, with several trials and failures uh, we've seen. I think we're now a little bit through, um, you see some smart speakers coming up, you see how all these ecosystems uh, systems are moving together, where you see also uh, partnerships beyond telco with hardware device suppliers, guys like us from big tech, who really come, come together and create these use cases. I think that's also where the business case becomes suddenly a bit more exciting than it was in the past, because in the past, I think we've always been a little bit cornered in, let's call it small try, trial and failures. So that's that's one of the area, and I think also on the on the content partnerships that you've seen, and if you if you look at the deal flow of the last couple of months, uh, I think Jason mentioned it also when we started today. Um, some of the big uh, uh, partnerships we we saw also with telcos. Also, this requires very good connectivity uh, on the on the on the infrastructure side. Also, this I think is now getting a breakthrough. Uh, when it has a certain scalability. I think that's the key thing. If we're talking big operators, if we're talking scale across several countries, it becomes interesting. If you're small, I think it's still a challenge. Yeah. I would actually add two things to, to, to what was mentioned before, with, with agreeing uh, what was mentioned. Uh, the first one is that I think that the, this, this whole COVID situation, it created uh, the enabler for uh, new digital things, but I would still say that uh, that this is so. We are closer now than one we, one year ago uh, to all of these digital things. But what is my experience is that uh, in this situation, uh, people are usually focusing on those things which are really supporting their daily life, their daily hassle, which can solve their daily issue. So I cannot go to the store. So I want to have an e-commerce store somewhere. So the e-commerce uh, market boosted. Or the other one, I want. I cannot go to a restaurant. So I am ordering through the net, which is which is a quite basic thing. But uh, now the 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 scale is there. Uh, so it means that the enabler is there. But still, I would not say that uh, that during this time, uh, a lot of people turn to smart home solutions or quite sophisticated tracking things or um, or this this kind of things. But but now the people are much closer to these things, so they are not really super scared about uh, cloud things. They are not scared about pay, payment through my phone without cash, without even a bank card. So they are now closer, and this is a quite good 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 base for us to jump in now but still i i have some 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 fear that uh, that although the, the the people are closer now the the purchasing power will be a bit less during the next year uh, so there will be a bit of um, of um, of a um, triangulation exercise here that how we can solve this one the other one is around the connectivity and now i'm really talking from a taco perspective we as tacos, we really have to fight now for for how we can be something which is more than a pipeline. Uh, because we could prove super, super strongly during this period that that our connectivity solution service, it is inevitable. But uh, when it comes to the whole ecosystem or the whole solution, uh, then we still have a um, a room to to jump or to step into as telcos uh, with partners or with uh, with our own uh, developments, but I would rather uh, have the partnership model here. So still here, I think that we have the chance here now, but we we have a lot of uh, things to do as telcos how to 
uh, to position ourselves into this market above the pipeline and above the, the pure connectivity layer. And I'm sure this is just the tip of the iceberg of this interesting conversation. Unfortunately, we are, we are a bit behind of time. So I think what we will do is we will start already with uh, presenting and start with the uh, presentations of the startups. So the first one Excellent. It's a uh, pleasure. is going to be the Excellent. CEO. It's a pleasure and being here, everyone. Thank you very Bina, much for your time. David and of course, for having us. May I share my screen? In our website, you can see we are an enabler, which means we are providing an SDK for companies to integrate inside of their application. And by integrating it, we're able to provide you a medical grade accuracy to extract vital signs just by using a camera. Today, we are able to extract oxygen saturation, heart rate, respiration rate, mental stress level. By the end of the year, we will also be releasing blood pressure right after that hemoglobin level. So basically the technology that we enable is any company just by using a, uh, uh, an app for Windows, Android, iPhone, whatever you wish, to be able to extract vital signs using the camera. Today, the solution was medically approved in Australia, in South Africa. Within the next month, it will be medically approved in Japan and in Canada. And by the end of Q2, it will be also approved by the FDA, so, which we are finalizing now the submission. The, uh, I'll give you a few examples of companies that already use this in production. Generali, one of the largest insurance companies in Europe, have already integrated our capabilities into their app. Sompo from Japan, one of the largest insurance companies in Japan. NFL Alumni in the US and uh, other huge corporations. The work that we are able to provide you that is if you're using any kind of an application today, the application can be a medical grade vital science extraction as part of the offering to your customers. And this kind of solution, now we're working with three out of the top 20 uh, telecom companies. And each and every telecom company, you know, from uh, the biggest in Canada, the biggest in the US, uh, the biggest, you know, entity Docomo, for example, in Japan, all of them have a health-based ecosystem. And the health-based ecosystem are able to provide uh, multiple types of uh, wellness capabilities. Using our SDK, as part of the offering that your pro, the telecom companies provide today to their customers, they can actually extract vital signs out of the box. In the last words, I will just say that the solution is completely age agnostic, skin color agnostic, gender agnostic. The solution already runs in production, for example, in Momentum in South Africa, one of the largest insurance companies in South Africa. Uh, we have over 60 customers worldwide using it. And hopefully by the end of the years, we'll also have two out of the three last stages valuation we have in major telecom companies as well. Uh, from our goal is to make eventually healthcare services available anywhere, anytime, and to anyone with an extremely low cost. I think that's in a very high level, the best I can do without the deck and a demo and a running, whatever. This is quite impressive. So uh, I think, uh, first of all, about the deck, let's try then to distribute it. Uh, I understand that some sure. attendees do see it. So apparently just the panelists, unfortunately, can see. But I think that will be, it give us a bit more time for a Q&A. So let's open this for a discussion and uh, if you have some question to to uh, to David, I think it will be the time. Yeah, David, I would I would. Uh, have... Yes, I have a comment. Yeah, please go for it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, please I go. wanted to ask: uh, Can you, uh, in 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 one sentence, uh, explain the user uh, journey? Sure. The user journey starts with a person opening an app. Explain and your. Sure. The user experience is extremely simple, which means that if he has any kind of a wellness application or any type of need to evaluate his healthcare or you as a provider require him, he just press start and looking at the camera for one minute, all the vital signs appear. If the conditions are not ideal, for example, there is not enough light in the room, there is a lot of motion, maybe his face is always jumpy, so our confidence mechanism validated and then he tells to the user, please move to a different steady location or just place your finger on the back camera. 
to any one of you who wishes to play with that, by the way, we can send you an invite. The app is already in the stores. It's available. We also have a corporate wellness, but the key go-to market for us is a B2B solution that you can integrate inside of your solution. I hope that answered your question, Vera. Can you send us the invite? Of course, definitely. Yes, all please of you. send us the invite. Please write me a message with your email or I'll get an email list of all of you and I'll send you an invite gladly. David, I, I would I would have a let's say maybe um, a very specific question. You mentioned uh, you're active in Canada and the US and in Japan. Um, I maybe I didn't overhear something in Europe, but you mentioned again uh, Generali, so one of the big uh, insurance companies. So I assume you yes, also sir. made your way through GDPR and these kind of things because I think digital health is always uh, like a super cool thing, but GDPR with this data is always a little bit. The tricky part that you know, uh, have to embrace. So we, no, sir, we don't have to do that. And why? Because the SDK runs on the edge device. So we as Bina are never exposed to the sensitive information. Generali is the only one that is exposed to the sensitive information of their customers, exactly like entity data in Japan or momentum in South Africa or even NFL. So we as Bina do not have any access to the sensitive data. So they take the opt-in from the uh, from their end customer or from the end I, user. Okay, great. Exactly. They can decide. In some customers, for example, they do not take anything, but the customer just get the benefits to measure his own vital signs without the need for a medical device. I I have actually two 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 questions. Uh, but start with the comment. I think it is really something which is uh, which is really eye catching. Uh, and then yes, you did really well without the presentation. Uh, the my my question. I I was about to 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 ask about the GDPR, but uh, the major thing is that is it is it something where you can actually track your historical data as well? This is one part. Uh, and the other part is that uh, that how you are uh, working with uh, with like are you working with uh, insurance companies and after that the medical uh, medical healthcare uh, sector. So is it there is there a way to transfer these so, things to a medical institution as well at the end of the day? So we are, for example, the solution was approved by the GP Association in Italy. And also now it's being approved by the largest medical provider in the United States. And the solution by itself, the key core is that it's extremely designed to be idiotic, which means connect to the camera, generate the vital signs. If you wish to have a trend to keep the data, to ship the data, to do whatever you wish with it, that's according to your app process and journey that you provide today but it's designed by design to be completely idiot proof from a technology point of view and also from an integration point of view. Mm -hmm. And regarding your second question, we have quite a few different telemedicine companies already use this technology. So during a video consultation, you can also extract vital signs and the doctor can make a completely different decision. Thank you. So I think this is the time for to continue for the next company. This is a, a pure example of how amazing technology can be also conveyed in a verbal way, uh, not only visual, but thank you very much, David. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Thank, thank you, David. Thank you. So thank we're you. going to proceed with Emil Golan, the CEO of Classus. Please take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, I hope you will see my screen now. You see that? Nope. No. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry for that, but I will continue without that. So, um, let's talk about education, um, more specific about digital learning, uh, especially now, as you know, it is relevant to every child all over the world. Um, so, about Classus, what is Classus platform? Classus. I mean, we can see we can see your presentation now. Oh, okay. we can see it. Yeah, okay, just okay. to reduce the uncertainty. Yes. Okay, so I'll put it in full screen. Great. Um, so, Classus is a digital bookshelf, and uh, not just a book; it's all uh, digital resources. A service with content from all publishers, 
designed especially for school needs. I will tell more about it. And personal for each uh, uh, student. Um, our four pillars are based on, uh, first of all, we have a distribution agreement with all the major publishers, especially in Europe, like Oxford, Cambridge, Pearson, others. Uh, it means it's a global uh, agreement, so we can act in uh, all over the world. The second thing, it's personalized digital bookshelf for every student and uh, teachers. Uh, it's it's mean that we know exactly what kind of book any student need uh, related according the subject that he's learning, according this the, the study group that is uh, associate. Uh, the third one is A to Z service. Uh, seamless integration with the school system. So we are really solving a big headache for schools uh, regarding uh, uh, bringing a full solution for digital resources. Uh, in one day, we can uh, uh, open a new, a new project. Uh, it doesn't matter where is it. Um, and above that is it's we create, uh, develop our uh, own reader uh book reader so it's you can add layers it's uh, multi layers you can share with your student and because we integrate with the school system we, each of the student the teachers have his own uh, uh, groups he can share it he can add it can be link it can be audio of any kind of uh, media um so if i summarize it's it's maybe similar to spotify that we have the knowledge to be a middle company that know how to bring the content, uh, have to deal with them, sell it to the schools or the department in the schools, collect the money and share it between the publishers. Um, for now, we start this school year with more than 300, almost 350 schools all over the world. We are active in three different uh, markets now. In Israel, for, for sure, we start here. Then we move to UK, and the, the third one is the international school market. I don't know if you know, there is over 12,000 international schools all over the world. We have schools in uh, in the Middle East. We have school in China, in the Far East, in, in other countries in Europe, like uh, Hungary or France or another place. We have uh, uh, 250 agreement with publishers all over the world. And for now, more than 150 users. Um, of course, we have been influenced by the COVID. And for us, it was the positive way. Uh, you can see the jump that we have from uh, last year. We start last school year with 15 schools, and we jump uh, 10 times for 140 uh, schools just in UK, state school, and uh, independent schools. Um, if you are looking what happened in the school, they start with remote learning, as everybody knows, but uh, the COVID is really accelerate, accelerate the, the meaning of digital learning. They are talking a lot of time about digital learning, but it's the first time that they are really do that. Uh, the school fundamentals think, uh, for example, in UK, there is no lockdown in the schools. All the schools are opening from September until now. Uh, learning in the schools so it's it's not remote learning anymore it's a digital learning so we are talking about connectivity of course it can be by the telcos which is not just in the school it's in their home and schools too we are talking now in the first time about personal device one-to-one -one. bring your own device it could be pc tablet smartphone uh, the student can use our solution on any device, any operating system, iOS, Android, whatever. At the same time, they get uh, a free, a three different uh, license for that. Um, I mean, sorry, you have just one, one minute left. Okay, so I will jump. Uh, uh, learning management system by Microsoft and Google. And the fourth fundamental is content. So it's company like us that can bring uh, a full solution uh, for example, one of our biggest and new uh, customer is, uh, is Eton College from UK, the famous independent schools. Uh, I can share it later what they talk about us. Uh, Jerusalem Municipality, we have a four years agreement with them, starting with 20, jumping to 200 schools. 
and not just books, everything. Um, I will finish with that. It's it's not usual that company like us come to the telcos and talk with us. They, we got uh, some inquiries from telcos, uh, especially in in Africa, talking about combination of a full solution, one stop shop, uh, regarding connectivity, devices, and content. Um, it's relevant to anybody all over the world. Every student, uh, we saw that the the COVID. Uh, found in, uh, the schools not really prepared for that, and everybody has not, there is no way back. Everybody talking about the next step. The digital uh, learning is here, and it's a good time. A company like you to jump inside to see what kind of uh, uh, infrastructures and content they need and cooperate with us. Thank you. Thank you for this great presentation. Um, I will leave it now for the panelists to ask a few questions. Yeah, I'm here. maybe I can start. Um, I mean, first of all, I think you don't have to convince us about the market. I'm, I'm, I'm a true believer in digital education. I'm probably a little bit biased as a dad and uh, being with a teacher. Sorry for that. Uh, but um, I, I, what I didn't fully get is like the market that you're targeting. I see you show the top-notch school, you show Eton, you show these, I think, high-profile schools. I think there's there's no doubt that these there's a willingness to pay, but that's like the top of the pyramid. I'm just wondering, what's your, what's your growth model? Are you really want to roll out this to, I would say, the, the mid-tier segment? Is there a regional focus? Or because we all know the education space is super fragmented across uh, regions, uh, I mean, just speaking about Europe, uh, I would say it's, it's, it's a little nightmare. I'm, I'm just wondering what's your plan to, uh, to grow this or you really want to focus on the very, let's say on the top tier? No, it's not, we are not focused only in the top tier. For example, in UK, 60% of the school that we have in UK are public school, not independent schools. Uh, the budget for books in the school are holding by the head of department per subject. So each of them have uh, his own budget. So the, the, our direct my, uh, target is the head of department. In most of the places, we are targeting the schools because the COVID, we're starting the social media campaigns. So all what we got in this school is coming from Facebook, Twitter, and other places. So it's, in, it's between B2B to B2C to B2C to B2B. So we are planning between that. And in the end, if it's more than one department, we have a, a full deal with the schools. There are some places like I, I show you in Jerusalem, or for example, I have a, a third meeting with the, with the head of minister of education in France. They are more centralized and they are bringing the solution for all the country. But usually in German too, it's 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 by school, uh, sometimes by the district, but in the end, it's it's the, all over the world. We have a, a local partner in India. We have a local partner in Ghana. They are all in the same situation. Content is content. It doesn't matter if the cost is five pound or ten pound. In the end, they are using the base for curriculum all over the world is books, is resources. You can't learn without resources or content. So they are paying for that. And, and not just the IN tier, for sure. Okay, thank you. You are in. I think Yasmin, now you are on mute. Yasmin, you are in. Uh... About my time, right? It's just a matter of time. So, anyway, Amir, thank you very much for this fascinating presentation. Uh, we would like to continue with the, the next uh, uh, startup, uh, Pure Sight. So I would like to welcome Sharon Ovadia, the CEO. Hi, Sharon. Hi, thank you. I'm not the CEO, I'm the VP Sales and Marketing. Sorry, VP in Sales and Marketing. Yeah, okay. um, so I will, uh, I will share my screen and I hope you can, you can see my presentation. Um, Can you see it? Indeed. Okay, so I'm Sharon. I 
thank you for your time. Um, I'm from PureSight. What we develop is online child safety service, um, which used to be called uh, parental control. Um, the reason we offer or there is existing in the world uh, such kind of solution of parental control or this child safety online is it's coming in order to help parents in the digital dimension, in the digital era. As you probably everybody knows, everybody here, the kids, uh, the kids today life is much different than what we used to, to have as kids. And they are much more using um, uh, digital devices and, and communication in order to do that. So what we developed actually in PureSight, we developed a service that helped parents in digital dimension. We try to avoid problems for kids such as cyberbullying, cyber predators, screen addiction, and, in, and be exposed to improper content. Um, I have here in the screen a few examples from a few trends that coming either in TikTok or in Instagram, uh, which can be, which are risky and, 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 and use uh, in, in a proper way. <clears throat> we developed, uh, um, we actually collected the whole kind of services um, or all kind of digital uh, area that kids are dealing and try to create a one-stop uh, service which deal with all the digital activity. And we created an app which called Surfy. So in Surfy, what we do, we actually take the social media and the messenger and we're monitoring it. We monitor the messages, the posts, the remarks, and we do it in Facebook, in WhatsApp, in Instagram, in Viber, and very soon in TikTok. Um, so actually what we do, we monitor this. And in case there is something that we believe that the parents need to know, we alert him, we send him some kind of a notification and you can see it, you can see it in the in the in the apps that he has on his on the parent device uh, in the level of improper uh, website we have 18 categories which including adults um, uh, hate violent drugs and some other stuff and we are uh, we we are filtering this information we are blocking uh, in a proper website or in case the, the user download the kids download an application that doesn't suit to his age um, and we, <clears throat> we also um, dealing with the screen time. We collect the, the screen time from all the kids' device. Um, um, and we, we uh, tell to the parents how much time the kids are today in, uh, have a screen time, especially during the COVID and the lockdown, it's, it's increasing dramatically. We also see in our, in our statistic and in, in our uh, database. And we enable the parents on either only to know the time or to disable or to limit it uh, and have certain level of control depend on his decision uh, about it. Um, also, <clears throat> we provide a, a tool to know the kid's location right now and also in the last 24 hours, which including also a geofencing notification in case the kid enter a home or arrive to school or leave school. This is one of the things that parents today, which their hour, working hour are extended, wanted to know. So actually there is four or five dimensions of the digital and, and then the, the parents can have a digital dashboard of the whole family with all the devices, whether it's PC or a tablet or mobile phone, and to get all the information uh, into its handset and, and be in certain level of awareness with the same like you have today in the real life to have it in the digital life of the kids and try at least to lock all the back doors that digital and internet and online is providing to the to to the kids. Um, this is some of the Sorry to cut you off, but there is just one minute left, so it would be a good idea to maybe wrap up. Okay. Why? Uh, there is always the discussion of why mobile operator need to offer such kind of service. Uh, and why yeah, not, not going to the market alone. So based on our experience, it's already 15 or six mobile operator of ISPs globally. The, the, um, the service is very easy upsell. One, the user is joining, once the family segment is, is joining, or uh, and they want to extend the contract or connecting to the call center or to the service of the telco. Um, it's real strong family segment differentiator between operators. Um, we saw in two cases that it's 
bundle real value, which uh, deduct churn of a family segment in 15%. We have very good example in Greece. And also it's a real nice additional revenues uh, to uh, and, and can bring dozens of uh, thousands of, of new customers uh, in through the service. Um, the last thing, since there, there is this area is kind of increasing in the last years and you see startups around it, I wanted to say why pure site. So the first thing is we have language and content analysts. We are we are we have a team of content analysts which actually uh, researching and checking new trends and new words and new uh, things in the kids of the territory that we walk. Um, uh, teen speak with teenagers are using. If you look at teenager chat today, it's completely different than when we talk. They use char a character om om omission. They use. Um, digit <coughs> numbers instead of digit, phonetic spelling, and some other stuff. So actually, the, the system is working on a content based, on a context based, and not on on a, a keywords. Uh, uh, so sure. we have... Sorry to I'm sorry to cut you off, but I think it would be good as well to uh, have a bit more time for us to Q and A for the panelists. Would okay. you like maybe to choose one sentence to just close the presentation? Yeah, um, what I want to say that we have a huge vers vers versatility. It's uh, it's uh, just to kids in age three to eighteen, uh, and we are looking for partners. Uh, and we have already fifteen globally, which we're doing, which we have few success stories. So we'll be happy to do it. Um, and there is some other things that we are we we can offer. Yeah, thank question. you. Thank you. Uh, question. I have a question. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, for sure, Telcos uh, is the right targeting group for you. My question is, what is um, uh, why? What makes you different in comparison with other uh, providers on this market, uh, also from Israel, for example, Keepers? Yeah. So. I will tell you that the biggest challenge in uh, the biggest challenge in this area is the language uh, part. Meaning, kids all over the world they speak first in different language. Second, uh, um, they have their own cultural things. So the two main challenges is the improper content, which are specific in Austria uh, to Austrian kids and Austrian teenagers. And the second thing is the the fact that you are passing on on. On the content which is in the social media like uh, Instagram and TikTok and WhatsApp and stuff like this. So if you are not really updating and adjust, to, it's not enough that you have a simple parser that will search uh, uh, 2,000 keywords. It needs to be more uh, more smart than this. So this is what we do first with deep machine learning uh, algorithm. We are 10 years in this area and we are very experienced and our technology is very deep. It's not uh, new. I mean, it's collecting. And second, we are hiring in each territory that we are working a content analyst, which actually go to any website of to many places which kids and teenagers are using, reading about trends and uploading the trends, inject the, 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 those trends and those things into our system. So if you have like a Momo trend, which is something starting in Latin America, which is something that asks kids to do risky stuff or the blue wave, uh, that came from Russia, uh, which challenged kids to do 50 risky tasks. So then we, we are constantly working on this and this will pop up and, 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 and warn the parents in case those kind of things. So uh, <clears throat> um, we are willing to, to be checked and challenged by any, anyone. And we think that our net is, is much more thicker than the others. We might have a, a bit more time for just one quick question, if there is any question. I would say I would say that my question is actually around the localization. Uh, and yes, because the language is the key here. And how you are dealing with quite rare languages and how you are updating it with the, with the rare languages. Like uh, in the CE, there are some languages not spoken by a lot of people. So how you are dealing with it and how it's uh, profitable at the end of the day to deal with uh, those rare languages. So, so we build the system in that way that um, uh, we are able to, to, to build in six weeks uh, uh, to introduce a new language. If I can tell you that we are supporting right now, um, uh, except from all the big known 
languages like English, Russian, Spanish, Portuguese, and the others. We also support Greek, uh, which is very complicated and unique language, uh, Czech uh, language, and also the Georgian one. So the way we did it, we prepared uh, like a kit, a startup kit that start with the, with those keywords and, and we train the engine. And then it's enabled to give almost the same capability that we give in English in these very rare languages. Now, the value that we bring, I think the most critical way is this language issue. The most things that are happening in the social network and in the messenger, the cyber bullying, the cyber predator are happening over there. And this is a key word. So we, are, we are having like a one-time fee, a small one for a few thousands, just in order to enable a new language. And if the languages exist, it's, it's already there. I mean, we are helping it. We are hiring a content uh, person that work with us locally. I mean, a local person. We have a person in Georgia. We have a person in, 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 in Czech Republic. And we also have a person in Greece, which which following those, those trends. So it's, it's make uh, things... Uh, uh, we know how to do those things. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much. Um, let's continue, please, with the last uh, but not the least presenter. From Call Hero, Rafael Maimon. Hi. The stage is yours. Uh, thank you. Let me just share my presentation and hopefully it will work. Can everybody see it? Yes. 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 Perfect. All right. Great. Um, so great presentations, everyone. Very interesting. I'm uh, I'm Rafael. Um, and to explain a bit more about Call Hero, let's start by talking about uh, small businesses and freelancers. So small businesses uh, and freelancers, they're hard working people. They are busy and you know unavailable most of their workday because they're actually working and busy and they're uh, and on the other side they're um most of their business is usually uh traditionally done over the phone so you know, people call them to book them and because of the unavailability they can't answer up to 50 percent of their phone calls so you know when you know what happens when you call a plumber uh that you found on lab and he doesn't answer then you just call the next one because that's how it is today. You want everybody wants everything immediately, and then you know the plumber just lost a customer because he couldn't answer the phone call. So um, we built Call Hero. So what is Call Hero? It's uh, it's a self serve, the first self serve phone agent for small businesses. So what it is, um, it's a mobile app. You can download it. Uh, any business can download it, and three minutes on average. Um, there's a smart agent a phone agent that answers the calls that you miss that you can't answer. Um, and then it can book meetings for you. It can answer frequently asked questions like, when are you open? What's your address? All sorts of questions like that. Um, and it filters spam, scam, and robocalls uh, without letting, with, without them even ringing on your phone. They don't ring. They go through us first. The agent understands what the call is about, and then it, it filters them. So the calls sound real we worked a lot on that and more than 80 percent of callers think they spoke to a real person uh so that's something we're really proud of, of. and um you know as an example so let's say business uh, danny's garage has call here on his phone and he couldn't answer a call from a customer so call here answers uh hi it's amy from danny's garage how may i help you today and then the caller says Hi, I uh, just wanted to know if you're open on the weekend or if you're open now, can I come now? Or or even I want to book a meeting with Danny uh, tomorrow if that's possible. And then the agent can do that on its own. And if, he, and if the agent doesn't know the answer, then it transfers the call. And if the business isn't available, it takes a message. But now comes the interesting part. So every single business, um, so if you look at a business, most of their calls are similar. So what we did is we have a model looking at every single business and analyzing uh, if it analyzes their incoming call. And it looks for patterns of questions that repeat themselves. And when it finds a pattern like that, it initiates a chat with the business just like that. Oh, hi, Danny. 
uh, would you like to automate a response to questions like that in the future? And then the business, Danny, you know, they don't need to be technical or anything. They just answer in free text. Yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, I'm open on the weekends from four to six. Um, now, what we built here is something called the bridge engine. This is proprietary technology. This is the first of its kind. And what it does, it takes the data of the calls, it clusters them into something we believe could be a new intent for this business. And then we take the answer of the business to what to answer to those calls. And from that, we, we it goes through the bridge and it creates an, a training phrase and intent so that Call Hero can automate answers to calls like that in the future without the business. So the business doesn't need to, to, to pick up the phone. It, it, Call Hero will answer that on its own. All of that is fully automated, no touch. And that's what we're really proud of. Um, and uh, when when you look at what we have right now, the, the app is live, obviously, uh, Apple Store and, and Play Store. And the app, the Call Hero raises um, it's, it raises the phone answer rate of businesses using it immediately to 100%. So it immediately answers calls 24 uh, 7, calls that the business missed. And slowly with time, while it's learning the use cases, it automates the calls and it reduces the need of the business to, to even pick up because it, it handles them on its own. Um, so, yeah, Call Hero is a revenue generator for businesses. Um, we launched uh, our product three months ago. Uh, we have a couple of hundreds of paying users and our waiting list, because our team is still small, is, 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 is growing exponentially. It's quite scary. And the, uh, the idea here is that Call Hero is viral at its nature. So when people call a business, a small business that they know, and uh, they don't get the business owner, they get suddenly an agent and that answers them. And most of them think they speak to a real person. And then when they get through to the business, eventually they ask, um, who, just, who, did I, who did I talk to? Like, did you hire a new receptionist or something? And then the business usually tells them, no, it's all here. And then five minutes later, they're on our, our waiting list. So uh, we have a ton of um, customers from diverse industries that we were surprised that needed call your daycares, barbers, contractors. Sorry, Rafa, Rafa, I'm sorry to cut you off, but already like five minutes passed. Would you like maybe to choose oh. one sentence to just, yeah, time flies. Yeah. Yes. When, so would you like to choose maybe one one sentence to wrap it up this, uh, this uh, presentation and we will give, uh, give it away so, to the panelists. Email, I'll, I'll, I'll finish with an email I got from a customer a week ago. Um, call Hero uh, helped me, ha Call Hero helps me not to look at my phone every two minutes. Uh, and it changed how our businesses use their phone in their day-to-day -day life. So yeah, that's what I want to end with. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to open this for questions for the, from the panelists. Yeah, maybe one one question. I mean, I get the idea of supporting the the small businesses. Um, just my experience is that you know the typical idea is like when when you have a free slot, let's say for for an appointment. I mean, the the weekend case you showed that I would say is a is pretty straightforward and also easy to understand. But when it comes to you know like the barber shop, like I need an appointment at uh, A B C time and do, uh, things like this. Do you? Um, work with any integrations of, let's say, very, very uh, basic uh, calendar tools or something like that. You know, I'm just thinking yeah. about the, you know, the, the scheduling part is like, I would say, the number one question that you have with many of the small businesses. Yeah, so we integrate with all the major scheduling tools online at the moment. The way it works, you, uh, the caller, when the business, when the agent understands the caller wants to book a meeting, it either does that over on the phone call or sends an SMS with a link, a text message with a link to the scheduling service that business use. So we integrate to all of them. It's it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, from, from, from my perspective uh, and working a lot with the, with the small enterprises, I think it is really it is really a good uh, a good thing and you actually pointed out a good uh, hassle for the small enterprises on the yeah. other side what i feel is that uh, in some of the cases uh, still the, the the small enterprises are quite uh, 
sort of defensive uh, in using uh, these things because they are afraid of uh, losing the personalization or the personal touch of their business and the the way how they are treating their customers and they are quite afraid of that situation that a quite loyal customer is uh, ringing and then uh, he cannot pick and then um, then um, an automated robot uh, answers that call and then uh, what happens with that loyal customer so how you are dealing with or what is the what is the major um, uh, speech towards this com these companies who are afraid of this uh, losing the uh, this personal flavor yeah that's a good question um so uh, we were concerned with that as well. And when we talked businesses, that, that was the number one question that we asked. And you'd be surprised. Um, so when, 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 when they have to choose between losing customers or having a system that can help them save those customers, they will always choose to try the, the service as well. Um, and we have implemented a system where you can, all, you can only have call hero answer calls or not in your contacts. So what a lot of our customers do, they save their most favorite and biggest clients on their contact list, and then Call Hero doesn't address them, or it addresses them in a different script. So just saying, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll just I'll get him on the line for you. And if he's not there, they'll just take a message um, instead of this regular script. So we're we have a way to separate contacts on your phone, and you can have all your uh, customers there, and then new cu new customers or new callers that mm -hmm. will be handled by Call Heroes Engine. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Rafael, thank you very much for a great presentation. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And with that, I would like to uh, finalize this session. Jason, I see that you're here, so I'll give, it, uh, I'll give the stage for you. But I wanted to personally thank you for all the panelists, all the startups, for great, quest great questions, great answers. And I hope this is just the beginning of a, a more interesting collaboration and knowledge sharing between corporations and startups. So thank you. And Jason, uh, I believe that now the stage is yours and you should. Thank you, Yasmin. So thank you so much for moderating and getting through some of those technical issues. Apologize to everyone. We had a few of those little bumps, but I'm so glad everything worked out. We had a fantastic lineup. A big thank you first to our sponsors, DLA Piper, Yuga Larnon, IBEX investors and MGS to the great companies. We had 11 presenting startups working very hard. We spent a lot of time with everyone. Very excited to have you taking part. Of course, the panelists in this session, this B2B session and the customer experience from 12 different countries joining us from really all over the world. And of course, to the attendees, people that have stayed in and networked and taking part of this event. We had a fantastic time over these past three hours covering some of the main topics of interest, innovation for telcos, from digital health and education to B2B, data, connectivity, customer experience, AI, really an unbelievable array of solutions. And I really hope that we'll see some great new partnerships come out between the companies and the corporations from here. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We are now going to go to our final part of the event, virtual random networking. So I highly encourage everyone to stay for that. You can go to it directly from your schedule where it's five minutes of speed dating to get put with somebody else in the event. Our next event in Access Innovation is going to be Access Tel Aviv in March, virtual. It's going to be our main event focusing on Israeli startups, global investors, and corporations. And I'm sure everyone will get news from us in the coming weeks. We have a fantastic surprise keynote speaker that will blow you away. So you'll see more information coming in that soon. Thank you so much, Robin, for joining us. And of course, thank you to the Access team, to Ed, to Darina, and everyone else for being part of this and helping build this event. It was really, really exciting. And we hope to see you again soon at our next conference. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Thank, you. thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. See Bye. you.